So if we could please give Andrea a round of applause, who will be moderating today. Thanks so much, Kendra. I wasn't expecting that. Um, how's everyone doing? My recommendation is be a sponge and learn as much as you possibly can. And when I mean learn, it doesn't matter if you're in business major, psychology major, communication, medical field, just learn, right? Because you're still figuring yourself out. I remember when I was 18 years old, I had no clue what I wanted to do in my life. And quite frankly, even when I graduated, I had no clue what I wanted in my life. I joke around about this. At 21 years old, I had a lot of goals and dreams. Now that I'm married, my goals and dreams are my wife's goals and dreams, right? <clears throat> so it's a little different. But I would say, number one, you have to take chance, take risk, and learn. Number two, everyone in this room, networking. Networking. And I'll say it again, networking. Mm. One of my really good buddies, um, he eventually went to Columbia, got his MBA there, and I asked him about his experience. So I have a bachelor's degree in finance. Two of my associates has a master's degree in finance and in taxation, okay? So I asked my really good buddy who has his master's degree, and I said, what was one of the best things that you picked up going to Columbia and Ivy League? And he went to a CUNY for undergrad, then he went to, obviously, an Ivy League for grad school. He said, the best thing I learned was networking. Some of the greatest people in his classrooms became really successful either entrepreneurs or professionals. If we find somebody that we can rely on that is going to show us that they are really interested in doing the work that we do and learning what we do and learning our process, we're going to invest in you. Right? Because we want, at the end of the day, we may have an opening. We may not have it right now, but when we do have that opening or if we know of other areas that have that opening, we're going to recommend you. We're going to say, hey, this is an opportunity for you to learn. And you may be given a task and you're sitting there, you complete your task and you sit there and it's like, okay, I'm just going to go on Google or something else. Go to your manager and say, hey, I completed my task. Or go to the coworker and say, hey, can I sit with you for a second? Can I learn about what you're doing? Because that's going to give you the opportunity to learn about different things that are in um, the agency. And don't be afraid to speak up. Right? We hired you because you have potential to do the work. right? And for me, I hire college aides. And I come in and I say, hey, I think two weeks on the job, say, hey, we're going to do a presentation. And it's going to be in front of 90 people. Are you up to it? And she said, yes. She was scared, but she said yes. It's like, okay, and let's figure out how we're going to do that. Let's figure out what you need to do. Let's figure out the practice, right? And she stayed with me for a year, and she was doing presentation just like my regular employees. She was doing everything my regular employees was doing because when asked, she said yes. I'm also going to say the importance of, like, why you're um, at Brooklyn College currently I cannot stress the importance of all of us will probably agree with this panel. Go to the career services office and get your resume looked at. Right now it's free. When you're a professional, you don't have those opportunities unless you're an alum. Occasionally you can come back, but like get it looked at now. But I would also say the importance of um, your online presence. So for example, us, like we are currently always looking at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great. Uh, a lot of um, even career um, opportunities, you can get a headshot for like $5 somewhere. Sometimes career set or other organizations will do it for free. Don't have your selfie of yourself and put it on LinkedIn. Um, but LinkedIn is a really good opportunity to also kind of have, you don't need to have every single position you've had on there, but it's a good way that if we Googled your name, which a lot of people do sometimes, like that's going to be the first thing that pops up about you. I think that one of the things that interns do, or at least in my experience, is that once they're hired, they get really comfortable. So when you're in the work environment and you see how, you know, employees that have been with the company for 20 years, you see how they interact with each other and, and how they vibe. Interns made the mistake of thinking, well, I can behave that way as well. So, you know, you just don't walk up to the CEO and say, hey, how's it hanging? Mm -hmm. Not a good look. Not a good look. Um, so you have to modify your behavior. And also learn. Interns, our interns, don't just spend time in one department. We move them around. So if you're in HR and you're an intern, you're gonna get to work with HRIS, you're gonna get to work with payroll, you're gonna get to work with learning and development, recruiting, <laughs> uh, employee relations. Soak all that in. If we don't give you enough, ask for more. And just shadow, just ask to, be sh ask to shadow other employees. That's what you're there for, you're there to learn. 
Um, if you intern and all they have you doing is making copies and getting coffee, you're wasting your time. You, you're there to learn and the companies are there to teach you. So soak it up and then just mind your behavior. When you're graduating, you're kind of panicking because those student loans are going to be coming up. And so you're blanket, you know, applying for as many jobs as possible. But if you don't, if you can't convey why you really want to work there, I mean, as a hiring manager, I want someone who wants to work for me. I don't want someone who just wants a job. I want someone who has done their research and is like, this is my dream job. Or just this is an area that I'm really passionate about or really like learning more about. Um, so that's, I think, really important is just researching as much as possible on the company. There's tons of information out there. Um, and then the other thing I'll just add is uh, after the interview, it's really great to uh, write a thank you note, thank you email. Um, I think it's a really great way to do a number of things. One, it can help you be remembered. Uh, maybe you were the last interview of the day and the hiring manager was like, yeah, after this, I'm going to my kid's uh, dance recital. So you can kind of say as a wrap up, like, I hope the, the dance recital went well. And they're like, ah, yes, that was the last person I interviewed, we talked about this, we talked about that. Um, it's also an opportunity for you to mention something that maybe you did forget to say in the interview. Like, yeah, I totally forgot that I needed, you know, that I, my senior thesis was on this book that this person actually worked on. So I'm going to write it in my, in my thank you note. Um, and another thing is if there were any reservations that you could tell or hesitations that the hiring manager had in your interview, like they asked you about your skills in Excel and you were like, yeah, it's not really something I feel comfortable about. You can say, I know that there, you know, I don't have have as much experience in Excel as maybe some of your other candidates. However, I just picked up the manual and I started reading about things like that just to show that you uh, listened in the interview and that you're you're ready to make the effort and work hard. So I think it's a really great opportunity, as long as there are no typos in it, mm. uh, to, to really make an impression. It definitely shows on your interview if you don't know anything about the organization and you can't articulate why you um, want what that opportunity would mean to you. The interview is definitely going to cut short. And for us as recruiters, it, it, it's just a waste of our time and your time. So I would definitely suggest if you really don't want um, a position in that organization, don't even apply <coughs> because it will show on your interview and it will be cut short. Make sure to check out the My Career tab on the BC Navigator app, where you can track your career progress based on the amount of credits you've earned, stay updated on upcoming events from the Magner Center, and watch our videos for insight and advice on your career field.